The year 1964 was a tumultuous time in American history. President John F. Kennedy's death in 1963 had shaken American citizens to their cores. While his successor, President Lyndon B. Johnson, was doing his best to satisfy the American people and keep peace within the nation, it was still a difficult time for the country nonetheless. African Americans were still working hard to attain equal rights in the country. Martin Luther King Jr. and Roy Wilkins, among other civil rights activists, continued demonstrations and protests. Thankfully, 1964 brought a momentous occasion and a huge breakthrough in the civil rights movement – the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Furthermore, Martin Luther King Jr. won the Nobel Peace Prize for his amazing work as a leader of the civil rights movement. African Americans weren't the only people pushing for change in America, though. Youth in America launched the counterculture movement that pushed for sexual liberation and women's rights, as well as rebelled against established authorities and traditions. International relationships concerning the United States were anything but peaceful. During this year, President Lyndon B. Johnson increased military presence in Indochina and became increasingly involved with the politics of North and South Vietnam. Of course, this would eventually result in the long and bloody Vietnam War. Meanwhile, a notorious serial killer known as the Boston Strangler was finally caught this year, and Jack Ruby, the man who shot President John F. Kennedy's assassin, was convicted of murder. Life in 1964 was strikingly different from life today, but technology and popular culture were both evolving rapidly. The Beatles became increasingly popular throughout the 1960s. Meanwhile, Sony introduced the world's first VCR, and the first Ford Mustang was manufactured. This big shift in technological advancement was incredibly exciting. Technology also advanced when it came to space travel. President Lyndon B. Johnson picked up where John F. Kennedy left off by encouraging NASA to continue pushing boundaries when it came to exploring the cosmos. In today's video, we're going to travel back in time to the year 1964 and take a look at some of the key moments in history. African Americans had been working non-stop for many years to ensure equal rights for themselves and their children. Make sure you stick around to find out the groundbreaking new act that made a huge difference in the civil rights movement. Facts First presents the year 1964. January 17th, Roald Dahl publishes Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. The beloved British novelist Roald Dahl published one of his most memorable works in 1964. Not only did he write the books like James and the Giant Peach, Fantastic Mr. Fox, and Matilda, but he was also the genius who created Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. Roald Dahl was known for his somewhat morbid children's books, which often featured kids stricken by poverty or horrible parents or guardians. His frequent theme of children being mistreated by adults likely stemmed from the abuse he suffered at a boarding school when he was a child. Roald Dahl's books provided an escape for many children, and he inspired lots of kids to become writers later on in their own lives. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is a classic novel that inspired the amazing movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, which was released in 1971. Sadly, Roald Dahl said that he was disappointed in the film because he felt it placed too much emphasis on Willy Wonka and not enough on Charlie. Still, the film remains a favorite among children and adults alike, even today. In 2005, Tim Burton directed his own interpretation of the book and released the film Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, although most people agree that the original film is much better. March 4th, Jack Ruby is convicted of the murder of Lee Harvey Oswald. On November 22, 1963, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. The death of this popular president sent shockwaves throughout the nation, and there was much anger directed towards his assassin, Lee Harvey Oswald. After Lee Harvey Oswald committed the terrible murder, he attempted to slip unnoticed into a movie theater. However, his suspicious behavior was noticed by a shoe store manager, John Brewer. He notified the theater's ticket clerk, who then called the police. Police officers entered the theater and pinpointed Lee Harvey Oswald, who they then arrested. On November 24, 1963, Lee Harvey Oswald was escorted to an armored car, which was to take him to the county jail. However, many enraged citizens were there to watch him, and a nightclub owner by the name of Jack Ruby got close enough to shoot him. Lee Harvey Oswald died that day. Reportedly, when the crowd learned that Oswald was shot, they burst into applause. Of course, even if many people were happy about the death of Oswald, Ruby was still subject to the law like anyone else. On March 14, 1964, Jack Ruby was convicted of murdering Lee Harvey Oswald, and he was sentenced to death. His conviction was later appealed, 
but while he was awaiting another trial, Ruby sadly died of a pulmonary embolism in prison on January 3, 1967. March 27, Alaska is struck by the most powerful earthquake in American history. On March 27, 1964, the biggest earthquake in U.S. history struck south-central Alaska. The earthquake was estimated to last around 4 minutes and 38 seconds, and while that might not sound very long, it was enough to cause devastating amounts of damage. It measured a total of 9.2 in magnitude, setting the record for the greatest earthquake in United States history, as well as the second largest earthquake in the world. Tsunamis occurred as a result of the earthquake, and the damage resulted in the deaths of 131 people. Sadly, there were many buildings that weren't properly constructed to withstand earthquakes, and a lot of damage occurred as a result. Recovery efforts took a long time, and President Lyndon B. Johnson had to send in military troops to help out. Furthermore, the aftershocks of the earthquake were also quite terrifying. One aftershock measured a magnitude of 6.0, and the aftershocks lasted for almost a year after the initial earthquake. The earthquake was so massive that it even resulted in small movements as far as Florida and Texas. April 17th, the first Ford Mustang is introduced. The first Ford Mustang was put on display at the World's Fair, and car lovers across the nation instantly fell in love with its sleek new design. On the very first day alone, Ford sold 22,000 individual cars to ecstatic buyers. The Ford Mustang spurred a new generation of cars referred to as pony cars, which later included Chevrolet Camaros and Dodge Challengers. These pony cars featured stylized designs that looked sporty but were also affordable for many Americans. They were also very easy to customize, and features such as convertible roofs were quite common. Pony cars were all the rage beginning with the Ford Mustang's release in 1964, and they remained popular for many years. In fact, in 2005, Ford released a new Ford Mustang in retro pony car style, which spurred a revival in later years. Today, Ford Mustangs, Dodge Challengers, and Chevrolet Camaros are still quite popular, although they have certainly undergone some heavy changes to keep up with the latest style. April 22, the World's Fair opens in New York. The 1964 World's Fair, held in New York City, featured the theme Peace Through Understanding. It featured over 140 different pavilions, as well as 110 restaurants. There was a total of 80 nations present, although most of the pavilions were dominated by American companies. Still, the 1964 World's Fair heavily focused on unity and peace throughout the world. In the center of the World's Fair, a 12-story high stainless steel globe had been constructed to represent the theme. There was lots of new technology to display at the World's Fair, and products like automobiles, chemicals, and computers were very prominent. A few major companies that displayed their wares and state-of-the-art technology included IBM, DuPont, Ford, and General Motors, among many others. Interestingly, Walt Disney also found great inspiration from this event. He used it to design his famous audio animatronics, which are a staple of Disney theme parks today. While much of the World's Fair was a market success, there was some controversy toward the end when people realized that it had been poorly managed in regards to finances, and the fair nearly went bankrupt. Still, it was a memorable event, and many agree that there has never been a World's Fair quite like this one ever since. July 2, President Lyndon B. Johnson signs the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The year 1964 hosted an enormously important event to the civil rights movement, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The passage of this act banned discrimination in the workplace based on race, color, religion, national origin, and sex, and it would later be amended to include sexual orientation as well. This made a huge difference in the lives of many black Americans who until that point had had a very difficult time finding work, because many white employers would openly discriminate during the hiring process. President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the act on July 2nd, although initially there were few powers in place to actually enforce the new law. Thankfully, over time, the act was strengthened, and it became harder for employers to discriminate based on race. The Civil Rights Act was met with heavy opposition and was pushed back due to two filibusters, but President Lyndon B. Johnson was adamant about getting it passed. Much of the credit must be owed to Martin Luther King Jr. as well, whose activism greatly helped the act to get passed. Later in the year, Martin Luther King Jr. would be greatly rewarded for all of his amazing work. But make sure you stick around to find out the prestigious award he won for his activism. And if you're enjoying the video so far, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more. July 16th, 
the Harlem Riot of 1964 begins. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 offered a momentous new layer of protection to African Americans. Of course, it wasn't enough to end the problem of racism. Fighting bigotry and injustice is, unfortunately, a slow and grueling process that met many setbacks along the way, and unfortunately still does even today. Just two weeks after the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed, tragedy struck. A 15-year-old African-American boy named James Powell was brutally murdered by a police lieutenant in front of a dozen people. A man named Patrick Lynch, who was a superintendent of an apartment building in Harlem, was upset by the presence of several black students near his property. He sprayed them with a hose and hurled racial slurs at the boys. James Powell, who was nearby with a few friends, began to throw nearby bottles and garbage can lids at the man in anger. A nearby police lieutenant, who was off-duty, intervened and violently shot James Powell three times, killing him. The black citizens of Harlem were outraged at the brutal murder, and several days of riots ensued. Many of the protesters were beaten by NYPD officers, and an estimated 118 protesters were injured. Sadly, the road to equality would be a long and winding one, even if a lot of progress was made in the year 1964. August 7 – Problems in Vietnam Escalate The Vietnam War was a long and bloody battle. The United States government allied itself with South Vietnam against North Vietnam in an effort to prevent the spread of communism. Early in August, two U.S. Navy destroyers that had been stationed in the Gulf of Tonkin were fired at by the North Vietnamese military. President Lyndon B. Johnson was deeply troubled by this and wanted to increase the United States military presence in the country. He asked Congress for permission to do so, and on August 7 they passed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. This gave President Lyndon B. Johnson the power to enact any form of retaliation he thought was required in Southeast Asia. At this point, President Lyndon B. Johnson wholeheartedly believed that the only way to settle the problems between North and South Vietnam was for the United States to become more heavily involved. This resulted in heavy escalation, which was ultimately rewarded with a long and grueling war that would not end until 1975. August 27, Mary Poppins is released. This Disney fantasy musical captured the hearts of adults and children across the nation. It starred Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke. The film was based on the book series of the same name, which was written by P. L. Travers. It was nominated for 13 Academy Awards, which is a record for any Disney film before or since. It won five of the 13 nominations – Best Actress, Best Film Editing, Best Visual Effects, Best Original Music Score, and Best Original Song for Chim Chim Cheri. The film was beautifully done and combined both live-action elements with animation. It was a legendary film for the Walt Disney Company, and it was the only Disney movie to receive a nomination for Best Picture while Walt Disney himself was still alive. Even today, Mary Poppins is considered to be the best live-action Disney movie ever produced. The magical music, the stunning visual effects, and the breathtaking performances all make this quirky fantasy musical a classic. October 27, The Boston Strangler is captured. The streets of Boston, Massachusetts were darkened by the presence of a notorious serial killer who was known as the Boston Strangler. Between 1962 and 1964, this man murdered 13 women. On October 27, after assaulting a woman in her own home, a suspect fled the scene of his crime. He was discovered and captured later that day and identified as Albert DeSalvo. While DNA did link him to one of the crimes, he did ultimately confess to 13 murders as the Boston Strangler. There's been some dispute as to whether or not he committed all of the crimes. Albert DeSalvo has a troubled past. His father was an extremely violent alcoholic, and young Albert began torturing animals as a child. When he was 12, he was arrested for assault and battery. In 1967, he was sentenced to life in prison. He escaped that same year, but was captured and transferred to a high-security prison. In 1973, his body was found in the prison's infirmary, stabbed to death by one of his fellow inmates. November 3rd, President Lyndon B. Johnson is elected as president. On November 3rd, President Lyndon B. Johnson was elected in a landslide vote against Republican nominee Barry Goldwater. While the American people likely would have much preferred the late President John F. Kennedy to lead them through the uncertainty of the Cold War, President Lyndon B. Johnson was still immensely popular. In fact, he won by the largest popular vote of any presidential election since 1820, when James Monroe won the popular vote in every single state. Still, President Lyndon B. Johnson's election was quite impressive. He won the popular vote in every state save six. Because he had served for fewer than 24 months as president after John F. Kennedy's death, 
Lyndon B. Johnson was allowed to run for a second term as president. During his term as president, he was immensely popular and could have easily run for president again in 1968. Secretly concerned about his physical health, though, Lyndon B. Johnson decided against running for a second term. November 28, the Mariner 4 spacecraft is launched. The United States was still working hard to improve their space technology. NASA worked tirelessly on spacecraft, hoping to land a man on the moon by the end of the decade. On November 28, 1964, NASA launched the Mariner 4. Its goal was to conduct a flyby of the planet Mars, and it was the first spacecraft to successfully do so. Mariner 4 was able to gather data about the planet Mars and transmit it back to NASA headquarters on Earth. This provided NASA with very important information about the planet, and the images of Mars' surface made many scientists realize how ludicrous the idea of life on Mars was. However, even though the spacecraft was launched in 1964, it wasn't until April of 1965 that the spacecraft actually flew by the planet Mars. It was a long wait, but well worth it for the valuable data the spacecraft retrieved. December 3rd, Sit-In at the University of California The 1960s brought a huge sweep of cultural movement. The youth of the decade were highly involved in political activism, starting the counterculture movement that raised awareness about sexual liberation and women's rights. Students of the University of California began the freedom of speech movement in protest to the restrictive policies of their college. A crowd of 6,000 students sat on campus and listened to some rousing speeches. The protest demonstration was met with huge opposition, however, and police officers ultimately stormed the campus. As a result, nearly 800 students were arrested. While many of the protesting students were arrested for their efforts, it sent a very clear message to the staff of the University of California, who realized that their student body could no longer be ignored. December 10, Martin Luther King Jr. accepts the Nobel Peace Prize At age 35, Martin Luther King Jr. became the youngest person in history as well as the second African-American to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. He was awarded this prestigious accolade for his stoic leadership of the civil rights movement. He was also granted $54,600 in prize money, which he, of course, donated to the civil rights movement. While he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize on October 14th, he gave his acceptance speech on December 10th in Oslo, Norway. Truly, he was one of the most deserving people to ever be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, as he brought about such momentous change in his lifetime. The year 1964 brought about a lot of change in American history. Were you more interested in learning about the civil rights movement or about the technological advancements that occurred during the year 1964? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Facts First for more.